Hi everybody, welcome to The Messy Cook. It's uh, been a while since I posted anything, so I apologize for that. I was off in Cuba on a trip for a little while. So today I am making a New York style cheesecake. This is a baked cheesecake. It's very thick and super rich. You really can't eat much of it, even though you want to, because it does taste so good. So we're gonna start, uh, I got most of the ingredients prepped. I do have to do a little bit of um, rind off of these for the recipe itself, but we're gonna start with the graham cracker crust. So I have one and a quarter cups of ground graham crackers. So you can do your own graham crackers uh, and do them yourself in a food processor or a blender to get them down, or you can buy them um, already in to a crumb, which I did today, and uh, a quarter cup of butter or margarine, whatever you prefer. I like butter because it just tastes a little bit better. And if we're doing a rich recipe like this, butter just seems to taste uh, much better in it. So I got that. Oh, got a spoon here. Got to get a fork out. Oh my gosh, I'm not doing well today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir up these, uh, the butter and the crumbs here. And I just want to get, just so it's kind of like a wet, bit of a wet mix. Enough that it's going to stick together in the bottom of a pan. You want a nine inch pan for this. You could do an eight inch as well. Nine inch, inch works best, but whatever, whatever you have. Um, this way, uh, you know, you get an even cook on it with a 9 inch. You should with the 8 as well, but you might have to cook in a minute or two more only because, uh, you know, the, with the, the mixture inside, it's going to be a little bit higher. So, so basically, this is what you're looking for, this lovely little crumb here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour this in the pan. Just dump it in like so. And you're going to get right in there with your hands or your fork or whatever. I personally use my hands. That's part of my messy cook thing. I like feeling what I'm doing. It's like when you're in the garden and you want to feel the earth between your fingers. You want to know that everything feels proper. So I'm just basically just pressing this into the bottom of the pan. The original recipe for this that I got was out of a book that my mother passed along after she passed away, just called Cheesecakes. Um, and uh, it had kind of a pastry crust, but I tried it a couple times and honestly it was horrible. So I decided that I much prefer this with just a basic graham cracker crust. I am going to post the original recipe uh, at the very end of the video. Um, it does show uh, the portion of the recipe for the pastry, but like I said, if you want to try it and you like it, that's great. If you don't like it, there's no need. Just do the graham cracker like I'm doing, which like I said, I prefer. So uh, there's no need to bake this. This is all set to go, so I'm just going to take this and set it aside. I'm just going to prep the rest of my ingredients and uh, I'm going to come right back to you. Okay, so I'm back. So now what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the actual cheesecake. So I'm going to give you the ingredients for the cheesecake, and I'm using a KitchenAid stand mixer. Uh, mixer, sorry. You can use a KitchenAid. You can use a hand mixer. You can use if you have a a Vitamix. It's really uh, done well in there. Um, food processor, whatever works for you. So what we're going to start off with is four blocks of cream cheese. So two pounds of cream cheese. So I got three in there. These are uh, eight ounce blocks, so you can buy whether it's Philadelphia, No Name, Selection, whatever brand you want, but please be sure it's cream cheese, not cream cheese product. You want to bring this to room temperature first, and uh, that's a really important step because it mixes much easier if you have everything at room temperature. So you want your um, KitchenAid on. I'm gonna lock it here. We're just gonna make sure you can see inside. Probably can't see inside, so we'll hold that up. So what I want to do is I want to uh, have the four blocks of cream cheese in there. Uh, next step, uh, we want to add in the sugar, and we have, <clears throat> excuse me here, one and a half cups of sugar. So I'm going to dump that sugar right in, okay? It's always good to pre-measure this stuff ahead of time, so it's nice and easy. I'm going to lock it, and I'm going to start missing it, just out of one. Now, I use, sorry, I should show you here, I use the whisk attachment. Um, you can use whatever one you work. I find this is good because you get the least amount of money. So I'm going to keep that on low and we're just going to get that mixing there. I'm going to move it up a little bit quicker just to knock some of that cream cheese off of the, uh, the whisk so we can get that going there. Perfect. So that's coming off a little bit now. So I'm going to turn that off for a moment. And what we're going to do next is we're going to add in uh, sugar. There's a quarter cup of flour. This kind of helps bind it a little bit. So we have one quarter cup of flour here. We're just going to dump that right in. And again, keep mixing. So we're just going to kind of let this go at maybe a three, four, just to kind of get things moving a little bit. We want to get that all mixed in. 
And next we have, let me just see here. I want to make sure I'm going in the right order here. <laughs> uh, sugar, flour, orange, and lemon rind, and the vanilla. So for the lemon rind, we want one and a half teaspoons of lemon rind. I don't know where my regular grater went, and I have kind of a plain uh, one, so it does a little bit a little bit um, bigger than I might normally like. So I'm just going to move this over and get a very quick extra little chop there. A little bit of lemon is there. This just kind of, I know, when you say New York style is a plain cheesecake, and you're probably wondering why this is going in. This just kind of gives a little bit of a hint. So there's about one and a half teaspoons of orange, and we want about two teaspoons, sorry, lemon rind. And then we want two teaspoons of orange rind. This is probably a little bit more, so I won't put quite all of it in, but I do want to do the same thing and just chop it a little bit better. I'm going to have to buy myself a regular cheese grater. Or, um, it's kind of the fine one you would you normally use for things like um, Parmesan cheese and whatnot. So actually that is about two teaspoons. So we're just going to add that in. Give myself a little rice here. Um, a little tip here, if you're doing a recipe that calls for lemon juice or orange juice or any type of citrus juice, this one does not, but if it calls for the juice and the rind, um, be sure to take the rind off first and juice it afterwards because once you've cut it to juice it, getting that rind off is much more difficult. So I'm going to lock this again and we're going to turn this up and let this mix in here and then I'll show you what's happening inside that bowl. You can see everything's mixing quite nice. There we go. And I'll make, turn that up a little bit so we can get it blended really, really well. Okay. Alright, so that's moving. It smells delicious already. Okay, we're going to turn that off and I'm going to get my scraper out and scrape the sides of the bowl down. Let's see here, should I have that ready along with all my ingredients? So I'm just going to move this up, lock it, push everything out. There's a little bit of flour and sugar at the bottom, so it's good to scrape this down a time or two to make sure things combine properly. And uh, yeah, I think you'll really enjoy this recipe. The nice thing about this is you can eat it plain, you can top it with you know, uh, any typing, type of topping you want. This is like a really good restaurant style, like I said, New York style cheesecake. This is, you know, you, there's lots of no-bake cheesecakes and whatnot, but this by far of every cheesecake I've ever had bought at a restaurant or, or elsewhere is by far my favorite. I usually do this at Christmas time. This one is a gift for uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, Laura, for her mama or mamushka for her 94th birthday, I think. If I'm wrong on that, I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, so we're just gonna mix that a little bit more. You can see here, you just wanna get that mixed in there. So you can see if you look really close, on the bottom looks like everything's mixed in so we're going to turn that off now what we want to do is we want to add in um we have let me see here four eggs and two additional egg yolks and a half a cup of cream so uh like i said i'll put the measurements at the bottom uh the end of the screen just so you have it all so what we want to do is you want to add the egg yolks and the eggs one at a time so i'll start with the egg yolks we're going to turn this up a little bit so it mix as well I've already got the two egg yolks uh, here. You can see I've got those already measured out. So we're going to add in one at a time. And if they do fall in both at the same time, it's not the end of the world. So there's one. This will make a nice, rich, rich color. And I'm going to mix the other one in. Once we mixed in, it's easy enough to mix in the other one. So we'll just turn that up a little bit and turn it back down. Now, these eggs I had were from my friend, um, from her farm, Faith, who I've mentioned before when I did the quick boiled eggs recipe. And it calls, uh, this recipe calls for four large eggs. Uh, these ones are a little bit smaller, uh, so I'm doing five. So we're going to add in one at a time. So there's one. And I'll continue to add those and come back on the last one for you. Okay, so I've scraped down. I have one more egg to add in, but I've scraped it down. But, just, uh, you know, when you scrape this, make sure you scrape it completely right at the very bottom as well. Um, with Not just with a hand mixer, but with this, uh, sometimes this doesn't quite reach to where it should be. And we want to, you can see there's some thicker pieces there. We want to make sure that that comes in uh, nice and creamy. So I'm going to put this back down. We're going to lock it up. And I'm going to turn this on to a little bit higher speed because we want to get this nice and smooth now and add in that last egg. Okay, so once that's all mixed in, we're gonna give it a good whip. I'm gonna turn up high here. You can see here that's getting really lovely. And make sure all those lumps are out. So we're gonna let that go for about one minute. 
All right, so lastly, I'm going to add in one quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla essence. Uh, this is the one I got in Mexico, but anyone will do. Real vanilla is great. If not, and you just have the artificial, guess what? That works too. So just a tiny bit. I feel like a little more vanilla flavor. I suppose we could add more in, but honestly, this is... Uh, this is just fine the way it is. And we're going to add in a half a cup of calls for cream on here. Remember that is whipping cream. So 35% whipping cream. Okay. And we're just going to get that all in there. And we're going to give this one last mix. And I've scraped it one more time. And this way we want to get a very nice smooth mixer. So we let this go for another minute. Okay. See that there. Straight down the sides. Be careful if you do this like I am. You don't want to get there. We go. I just want to make sure everything's in there nice and smooth. Look at that. Look at a nice, very uh, pale yellow ivory sort of color. I'm going to turn it up and get a little bit of air into this so when this cooks, it's not super, super heavy, but uh, it's going to be beautiful. And there we go. Okay, so this is all done. You'll see it's nice and smooth. We're going to take this out of the bowl and we're going to put it uh, now in that pre graham cracker crust that we did up. So we want to pour that in there. And again, I've scraped, like I said, scrape, scrape, scrape. Oops, sorry, we want to be sure that we, uh, um, sorry, we get everything off of this batter. I want to lick this tastes so good, but I won't because it does have raw eggs. So I wouldn't recommend it. It's not one of those things you can lick the bowl without possibly getting sick. Um, can't say you haven't tried it before, but it's uh, just a little taste, but yeah, I didn't get sick from it, but you just want to be safe anyhow. So here's our uh, cheesecake mixture. It will go up almost to the top. Now you can, if you want, you can put uh, parchment paper around the edges or whatnot. I never do. This comes out pretty good. So we're just going to get this all in. We want to be sure that it's nice and even. I don't want to miss even a drop of this because it's so good. Um, I suppose you could probably do these individuals as well. Um, you'd have to play around the cooking time. I'm not sure how that would work. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, we've got this all done. I'll put that in the sink there. I'm going to this to soak in a few minutes. So, what I want to do, as you can see here, is I'm just going to smooth this out as, po as smooth as possible. Across the top. We want it nice and even. And you can see that little bit of lemon and orange rind in there, which is a nice little addition. Like I said, if you decide you don't want that, you don't have to add it. Um, although it is really delicious, but yeah, if you don't like citrus or you're allergic, take it out and put another uh, maybe half a teaspoon of vanilla in there, and that will give you a little bit extra. But I mean, this is just perfect. So there we go. So that's all set. I have preheated my oven to 550 degrees. We're going to bake it at 550 for 10 minutes, and then we're going to reduce the heat to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to bake for one more hour and then we're going to take it out of the oven and we're going to cool it on a rack until it's to room temperature. Uh, some people sprinkle with nutmeg. That's what this recipe calls for, but you can sprinkle it with anything. Put on cherry sauce, strawberries, fresh berries, fresh blueberries, uh, chocolate sauce, you know, whatever, anything you like. And if you want just plain, that's good. Add a little whipped cream. It's just delicious. So we're going to get this in the oven. Let's see, I have the oven at 550 degrees. And be sure it's fully preheated. This one is. So I've got the oven open here. We want to put this on the middle rack of the oven. I am using a spring form pan, as you can see here at the side. Make sure that's in properly. I'm going to pop that in the oven. Just leave it. I'm going to put my timer on for 10 minutes. So see, I have a bunch of stuff up here. And when that 10 minutes is done, I'm going to turn, remember, turn the oven down to 250 degrees Fahrenheit and leave the timer on for one more hour. I will come back uh, once that uh, hour and 10 minutes is up. Okay, folks, so the cheesecake is done. I'm going to pop this out of the oven, and I'm going to put it in the dining room on the table because uh, today I am also making the pasta sauce for lasagnas. So this looks a tiny bit jiggly on the top still, so I'm actually going to put that in and leave it for five more minutes on 200. Um, you know, you got to kind of play with it. I'm going to put my bake my temperature back on because I turned that off, so we're going to Put that back down to 200, and I'm going to put it on for another, you know what, let me see here. I'll put it on for seven more minutes, and then we'll get that taken out. Okay, so the cheesecake is done. I've just pulled it out of the oven. You can see it does have a tiny crack on the side, but that's no big deal. Uh, you're going to let this cool. You'll see that the top here has come up just a little bit, and that's going to sink back down. But we want to cool this in the pan completely 
until it's completely cool. So I'm going to leave it there for probably three or four hours. When it's come to at least room temperature, I'm going to take it, chill it in the fridge, and um, this is going to get passed along, like I said, to my friend Laura for her mom's birthday. And um, when she serves it up, I will add that photo to the end of this video and uh, show you what it looks like when it's inside and whatnot. So um, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to the page and I hope to see you back soon. There are several surprises you can see in the back of the video here. There's going to be another video coming uh, today or tomorrow. I am making a whole bunch of lasagnas for my niece's wedding and uh, we're just getting ready to work on the sauce now. So look for that upcoming video. Don't forget to put a reminder on there so when a new video comes out you don't miss it. Click the thank you, or the like page and share with your friends. Thank you so much and have a great day.